All right, so what I'm going to do is a demonstration of Le Chatelier's principle. And so the reaction that we're going to be seeing is right here. So I have a cobalt complex, which has a pink color, and I have a cobalt complex that has a blue or purple color, depending on sort of how uh, this solution is made. So in our case, it kind of looks a little bit more purple. Uh, but what I have here is a equilibrium between both of these complexes. And so I can sort of adjust or change this equilibrium if I add more of a reactant or if I add more of a product. And so what I have here is um, the cobalt complex that has that beautiful pink color. You can actually see it a little bit better here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a little bit inside of the bottom of a test tube. So it's probably enough. And so inside of this test tube, I now have my cobalt complex with a pink color. So if I want to upset this compound, which right now is in perfect equilibrium, all I have to do is either add or take away something. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add more Cl-. And so when I say add more Cl-, I'm going to use hydrochloric acid as my source of Cl-. All right, so let's take a look inside of our test tube. While I add, let's see if I can focus a little bit better. While I add uh, HCl, so I'm adding HCl right now. I don't know if you can tell, but I now have a purple color to my solution. And so now that I have a purple color to my solution, uh, I now have more of this complex, this cobalt complex. So the nice thing is, remember, this is a dynamic equilibrium, so I can shift seamlessly from pink to purple or purple back to pink. So how can I do that? Well, according to my reaction, all I would need to do is add some uh, water to that. And so I should have some distilled water. Move it all the way over here, though. But uh, I'm going to now add some distilled water to this. And now take a look and see what happens to our complex. So here is when we add distilled water. You can probably already see it turning a little bit more, a little bit more pink. So I need to mix this around a bit. Okay, sort of mix, mix it around. It's not going to be the same sort of dark pink color, but you can see, especially where it's been, we now have a pink colored complex again. It's still a little bit purple down here, but it looks like it's spreading out. And so now I have my pink complex again. Now here's the other cool thing. Remember, Le Chatelier's principle also has to do with temperature. And so I could also adjust the temperature. I just need to know if this is an endothermic or an exothermic reaction. So it just so happens this is an endothermic reaction. So endothermic meaning right here, I can add heat as a reactant to this equation. And so um, if I decide to heat this stuff up, um, my equilibrium is going to shift again. And so what I have over here is um, a little bit of almost boiling water. And so I'm going to add my complex and I'm going to see sort of what happens. Now, if this color change isn't as you know sort of dramatic as I want it to be, I'm probably going to uh, just sort of cut that and use a different mixture. Here I go. So we'll see sort of what happens. You can see it right now, because it's on direct heat, that's turning now to a beautiful shade of blue. So it looks like my complex actually was correct. I mean, that's perfect. And so right now, as that uh, solution heats up, what we're gonna end up with then is gradually the heat is gonna spread throughout the test tube and I'm gonna end up with a beautiful blue or purple color as that equilibrium reestablish itself. All right, so that is Le Chatelier's principle in general, and I hope you enjoyed that.